parents, Paw Patrol The Mighty Movie is coming to theaters on September 29th. When a magical meteor crash lands in Adventure City, it gives the Paw Patrol pups superpowers. Holy smokes. But things take a turn for the worse when Humdinger breaks out of jail to steal their superpowers. Oh dear. Will the mighty pups be able to save Adventure City before it's too late? Oh, mark your calendars to see Paw Patrol, the mighty movie, in theaters on September 29th. Hello, Critter Protectors, Mr. Jim here, and welcome to Kids Animal Stories. A place where there's always a mystery and adventure around every single corner. If you love critters of all shapes and sizes, I need you on our Critter Protector team. Join our adventure as we learn about critters from around the world and in our backyards. Well, my friends, are you ready for today's adventure? Me too! Let's go! It was a cold, clear morning off the eastern coast of Canada. Puffy white clouds float lazily above the choppy waters of the St. Lawrence Gulf. Atlas, the beluga whale, and his pod were getting ready to hunt for fish. A pod is a group of beluga whales. That's kind of cool. A pod. (laughs) They live, travel, and hunt together. Some pods are made up of whales from the same family and others have a mix of whales from many different families. Belugas are social animals that love interacting with each other. Okay, here we go, thought Atlas. I think I'll have the usual this morning. Four codfish and four clams. The usual is very important to Atlas. He likes things to be done a certain way and has a hard time when plans change. What about you? Do you like to follow a certain plan? Or do you prefer to do things differently every day? That particular morning was a great one for Atlas because the hunt went exactly as planned. He used his teeth to chomp, 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 (laughs) up exactly four cod and four clams. After breakfast, he did his usual morning workout of ten spins to the right, ten spins to the left, ten forward somersaults and ten backward somersaults. Holy smokes, that's quite the workout. Can you do all those spins and rolls? He used his strong flippers and long, white dorsal ridge to navigate smoothly through the water. Time for sound school, Atlas said. I wonder what we will learn about today. Atlas hurried to join the other young belugas gathered around their teacher, Professor Melody. Good morning, class. Good morning, Professor Melody, everybody replied. Did everyone remember to bring their melon to class today? We simply cannot begin unless everyone has brought the proper tools. The other students shook with laughter as Atlas raised his flipper to speak. Professor Melody, our our melons are part of our bodies. It would be pretty impossible to leave them behind. (laughs) Right you are, young man, replied Professor Melody with a wink. Just thought we could start today's lesson with a bit of humor. You might be wondering, uh, just like myself included, what is, what are, why are they talking about melons? Like the food? Melon? Oh, wait. No, it has to do with belugas making sounds. Uh, let me explain. Beluga whales have a giant squishy lump on top of their heads called, you guessed it, a melon. They can change the shape of their melon in order to make different vocalizations like clicks, chips, and squeals. 
Scientists think that belugas use these special sounds to help them communicate, locate food, and navigate on long journeys. Wow, can you imagine having a big melon attached onto the top of your head that you could control its shape? Wow, that'd be pretty wild. Professor Melody, can we, can we start off with the sound matching game today? Asked the student near Atlas. Excellent idea. However, we must do our warm-ups before we can do anything else. So we will start with our usual stretches and then play the sound matching game. Atlas breathed a sigh of relief. He would have felt terrible if they did things out of order. Professor Melody led the group through warm-ups. They stretched their melons up as high as possible. Then they squashed them down as small as they could. Next was up and down wiggles, and finally, side to side wiggles. Would you like to try those stretches with me? Here, stretch your forehead up towards the sky. Now bring your forehead down towards your nose. Wiggle your noggin up and down and side to side. Do you feel like a beluga whale now? (laughs) I either feel like a beluga whale or like my brain is now a salad that I got tossed around. After warm-ups, Professor Melody started the sound matching game. She made a low chirping sound and asked her students to match it. Atlas concentrated hard and wiggled his melon around until he was able to repeat the sound his teacher had made. All around him, the other students were doing the same. Everyone was giggling at the silly faces their friends made while trying to copy the chirps. The class was just about to move on to the next sound when Professor Melody held up her fin. There was a lot of noise coming from the rest of their pod gathered in the shallows. Wait here, class. I'm going to find out what's going on. I will return shortly with my findings. Atlas and the other young belugas found themselves unable to stay put. They wanted to know what was going on and followed the white blur of their teacher as she moved through the water towards the disturbance. Atlas swam up just in time to see... A shadowy figure swimming towards the grown-up belugas. It was gray, like a baby beluga, but the same size as Atlas. And most unusual of all, it had what looked like was a pointy stick on its head. What? Atlas was scared and had a lot of questions about what in the world was going on. Who is this stranger swimming towards them with this giant pointy thing coming out of its head? Wait, is it a unicorn? Why is it here and what is that thing on its head? And I'm not sure. So many questions and we're going to have to wait and see what happens on the next adventure of Kids Animal Stories. Great job. You listened all the way to the end, and you know what time it is. It's time for some Critter Protector shout-outs. I want to say hey to Freya from Oregon, Lane from Virginia, Zora from Georgia, Priscilla from Ontario, Canada, Arthur Thaligan from Dallas, Texas, and Eva from Ontario. I'm so glad that you're All critter protectors, we could not protect all the critters in the world and in our backyards. Without you, my friends, well, you have a super duper day, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Bye! Hey, parents. Home is a place to laugh, learn, and play, and a place where everyone should always feel safe. That's why at Kidda, we believe that protecting children from house fires is everyone's cause. Join us in our mission to help families everywhere learn about fire safety so we can help keep children safe at home and ensure lots more laughs in the future. Learn about the importance of smoke alarms and creating your own home fire safety plan by visiting causeforalarm.org.